I wore a continuous glucose monitor for 10 days to learn more about my metabolic health and my blood sugar. And what I learned didn't just surprise me, it actually made me a little concerned about my own health. So if you're wondering if wearing a CGM is right for you, I'm gonna show you how sleep, food, and even light affected my blood sugar. Cause there's a ton that you can learn from wearing a CGM. So stick around if you wanna know exactly what to expect from wearing one. So I've actually been wanting to use a CGM for a number of years, not because I'm obsessed with my health, but because I'm actually legitimately concerned about my blood sugar. And the reason for this is because though I'm not diabetic, my dad was. Now, he was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was about 42 years old, and I'm 38, so that's just a few years away from me. But my dad actually kind of suffered a lot. He had neuropathy in his legs, he couldn't feel his feet, he would get ulcers in his feet, he also had chronic infections in his knees, and then he was also on dialysis for the last four to five years of his life. I mean, he would do that three to four days every single week, and then after about 30 years of poorly managing his diabetes, he eventually died as a result of some complications related to the disease. And that was about eight years ago. So measuring blood sugar has always been a part of my life. And even though I'm pretty good about my nutrition and my lifestyle right now, I still see a lot of my dad in me. But the longer I can keep my health while also avoiding my dad's complications, that's gonna make me a better dad and also a better husband. Now, just as a really quick heads up, this video is actually sponsored by Levels, the company that sent me the CGMs to link up to their app so I could do some really fun experimentation and just see how my blood sugar responds. But with that being said, Levels didn't tell me to say anything, they didn't tell me to do anything. This is really just my honest experience using the CGM, using the Levels app, and then learning more about my body. So after wearing the CGM for about 10 days, I have about a handful of things that I wanna share with you about my blood sugar that are actually gonna be kind of surprising to you. And one of them, I don't even know if anyone's ever tested on YouTube before. Now, I'm gonna go over that shortly though, but before we do that, if you don't know what a CGM is or a continuous glucose monitor, well, it's just a little device that you wear on your arm that tracks your blood sugar 24 seven. But the interesting thing about CGMs is that they technically don't measure your blood glucose directly from your bloodstream. The way they work is that they have this little filament that goes into your skin and it reads glucose levels in the fluid around your cells called interstitial fluid, so not your blood. But it's a pretty strong proxy for what's actually happening with your blood glucose levels inside your bloodstream. And one of the nice things about it is that you can't really even feel it. Really kind of the only thing that I ever feel is just the adhesive around this little sticker that you put on your skin to cover the actual device itself. But other than that, I haven't really felt anything at all over the last 10 days. Now, once the CGM was actually on my arm, obviously I wanted to see what kind of moved the needle. So the first thing that I actually tested was how light affected my blood sugar. morning it's about 6 a.m. right now and I'm gonna run a little experiment that I think you might like so what I'm gonna do right now is in a fasted state I'm gonna have three tablespoons of honey mixed with hot water and then in a couple of days I'm gonna do the exact same thing so three tablespoons hot water down the hatch but beforehand what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some red light therapy I'm gonna to see if the red light therapy actually positively impacts my blood sugar response because there is some science that says that that can actually happen. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we got honey water ready and my blood sugar is about 97 right now. So here we go. It's pretty good, it's really sweet. Okay, so I just got an alert from my Levels app and my blood sugar is at 171 and I think it's still climbing. It's only been like 35 minutes. So I don't know, I think it might go a little bit higher, but this is kind of exciting. Okay, so we're doing a two hour check-in right now and I gotta be honest, don't I don't feel great. I don't feel that good. So I ended up peaking about an hour ago at 200 milligrams per deciliter. And right now I'm at 82. 
So that's a pretty big swing. So from 97 to 200 down to 82, feeling a little sluggish, a little sweaty, but then also I am really, really hungry and I'm also kind of having a little difficulty thinking right now. So it is now, it's almost four now, and I'm still feeling a little bit off. Definitely a lot better than this morning, but throughout the day I've just been having a ton of different cravings that I usually never get. So definitely because of the huge swing in blood sugar and my big crash, but I am looking forward to the next part of the experiment, which is using the red light therapy. And when I say I'm looking forward to it, I'm kind of not really looking forward to it because I really <laughs> just hope that my, my blood sugar doesn't swing so violently. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in a couple of days when I try it again. Good morning. It's... 6.30 a.m. and blood sugar right now is at 91, but I'm gonna do the red light therapy and then honey experiment. So I'm gonna do 10 minutes of red light therapy on my back, 10 minutes of red light therapy on my chest, and then I'm gonna have the three tablespoons of honey, I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that my blood sugar does not blow up like it did the other day, because that was really horrible and it just ruined my day yesterday too. But let's get started and see what happens. Okay, timer is gonna be set for 10 minutes and then let's start baking. did 10 minutes on the front. That's my daughter right there. Um, we're gonna do 10 minutes on the back now. Okay, we're all done. My daughter wants to have a turn now. So I'm gonna prep the honey water and then I'm gonna drink it. My daughter's still playing with the red light so that's why everything is red right now. But uh, my current blood sugar is at 104 so it went up a little bit. And let's see what happens to my total blood glucose, how fast it drops. And then I really hope that it just doesn't ruin my morning and the rest of the day. <laughs> This honey is like scooping ice cream. It's really hard. Okay, so it's seven in the morning now and the house is officially woken up. Kids are playing. Let's drink the honey. It's so sweet. So my blood sugar dropped down to 79, starting to climb I'm about a third of the way done with this. So it's been about two hours since I drank the honey water and a couple of interesting things have happened. First, my peak blood glucose levels topped out at 176. So the other day without red light therapy, it was at 200 or 201, I can't remember, but that's a pretty significant difference right there. So I think the red light therapy definitely helped with that. Now the other thing is that I've kind of crashed at the moment, so my blood sugar is actually at 75, but I actually don't really feel that bad and I'm not feeling any kind of hypoglycemic symptoms, but maybe yet, I should say. But I'm kind of anticipating that I'm not gonna feel anything just because I was feeling really, really bad the other day. So I'm gonna I'll let you know how things are going throughout the day. I don't think I'm gonna feel off and hopefully I can get some really good quality sleep tonight though, but we'll see. So it's 8.30 and I gotta be honest, Today was kind of a normal day. I uh, didn't have any blood sugar crashes, didn't have any cravings, so that's really exciting. I'm really glad that that happened. So nothing, nothing to complain about. 
Well, it appears that red light therapy actually does work pretty well when it comes to lowering your peak blood glucose values. So I think that's really fascinating. And I think it was also really cool that I was able to get all this insight from using the CGM provided by Levels. And I actually really think that it would have been incredibly hard and really annoying to go through this entire process just by using a finger prick, like traditional glucose monitor. That would have been really horrible. Now, another thing that I tested was eating a fruit smoothie with some raw milk and then also eating those ingredients one by one. And I think you're gonna find this pretty interesting because I didn't expect these results at all. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a smoothie with just raw milk and some mixed fruit, then obviously monitor my blood glucose. And then tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drink the raw milk and then just eat the mixed fruit by itself, I'm not gonna blend it at all. And I wanna just see how that affects my blood sugar and then compare the two. Uh, uh, I can't reach it. You got it, come on. Uh -huh. I can't reach it. Here, come on. Biggest smoothie ever, but here goes nothing. It's good. It's uh, raw milk, mixed berries, one whole banana. Yum. Also forgot to mention that my blood glucose before this was 97 and I gave my son just a little bit because, you know, he's a little guy wanting some. Okay, do you like your smoothie? Yeah. Can this be the strawberry? The strawberry? Yeah. Yeah. So the smoothie experiment has been pretty interesting. And the reason for that is because my peak blood sugar topped out at 115 milligrams per deciliter, which is not the response that I was actually thinking it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be quite a bit higher, but um, maybe I had too much milk in there. So uh, tomorrow's gonna be interesting though, because I actually think that my blood sugar response might be higher than today's but we'll see. All right, so part two of the experiment, we're just drinking some milk, having a banana, and then also gonna have this big bowl of fruit right here, all eating that individually. Let's see what happens to my blood sugar and compare it to what happened yesterday with the smoothie. Mm -hmm. Who's that? So it's been a few hours since I had the individual ingredients and my blood sugar blew up. It was at 164, that was the peak blood glucose measurement. And that's a huge difference compared to the 115 from yesterday when it was in smoothie form, so pre-blended. So now there's two things, two reasons why I think this has happened. So the first one is that last night I got a lot less sleep than the night before. and Usually my blood sugar is a little bit all over the place when I have less hours of sleep. We'll talk about this a little bit more though. And then the second thing was that yesterday I had this after my lunch, about two to three hours after my lunch, but I had a pretty big lunch with about two and a half beef patties, some cheese and a couple other things. Today, I really only had about four eggs, a really small cup of coffee, and that's kind of it. So I would say today my stomach was probably a little bit more empty. So that being said, 164 is still a lot higher than 115. So after wearing the CGM for about 10 days and running these two different experiments, I started to notice a couple of different patterns with my blood sugar and some of it honestly wasn't really what I expected. So I wanna share some of the big takeaways that really stuck with me and some of this might actually change the way that you think about your habits too. 
Now, the first big takeaway from all of this is that one night of bad sleep can completely throw off your blood sugar. I had a couple of nights of some bad sleep or just not enough sleep. And my fasting blood glucose was up in the pre-diabetic range. And even in the middle of the night, one night, it got up as high as 113, which is really, really high and makes me worried a lot about the quality of my sleep and how certain lifestyle factors affect your blood sugar. The second big takeaway was that once I put the CGM on my arm, I was instantly making better decisions around food. My decision making was much more thought out, it was much more intentional and deliberate, and I think this is really important. And because you're wearing the CGM, you're getting that live feedback, it's really gonna help incentivize you to make a lot better choices. So while a CGM can help you make a lot more intentional decisions around food, I think a lot of people are gonna be very concerned when they do see that occasional big spike with their blood sugar. And to me, this is just a very normal response and I don't think people necessarily need to be worried about this so much, unless you're the type of person who is seeing pretty consistently elevated baseline levels with their blood sugar, then I really do think it's important to kind of pay attention to that and really look into what you can do to support your carbohydrate metabolism and your carbohydrate tolerance. Now, I do wanna go over some of the pros and the cons of using the Levels app. And I would say that the biggest con that I experienced was just the initial setup because what you have to do is you have to download the Dexcom G7 app and then also the Levels app. Then you have to tweak and toggle a lot of different settings. So if you're not super tech savvy, you might have a little bit of a harder time with this process. Then the second thing is that because you are toggling some of these settings, a lot of people that I've talked to have said that their CGMs have woken them up in the middle of the night because they may have experienced too low blood sugar and then an alarm will go off. And obviously no one wants to get woken up in the middle of the night. So, but for me, I didn't have that experience at all. I was able to kind of modify and tweak my settings. So I wasn't getting those notifications, but once you actually get through that initial setup, it's really just kind of smooth sailing from there. And when it comes to the pros, I really prefer the Levels app over using the Dexcom app. I think the information is a little bit more robust. I find that it's still very easy to read and understand. And I just prefer the user interface over the Dexcom app. And the other thing that I think is really important too is that the Levels app allows you to look back at your entire history of CGM usage. So I think that's a huge advantage if you're interested in tracking long-term data versus short-term data. But overall, there's definitely no such thing as a perfect app. And I think Levels does a really great job with what they have going right now. And if you're the type of person who is really kind of struggling to stay accountable or stay consistent with their food and other lifestyle factors, or if you're the type of person who is worried about prediabetes or diabetes, or if you're just really interested in self-optimization and self-experimentation, then I think levels could be a really good thing for you to try if you haven't tried it already. And for me, once you kind of are able to collect all of this data and information on your blood glucose and how it relates to your exercise, your sleep, your food, stress, all of these different parameters, then I think it's gonna allow you to steer yourself in the right direction and make better choices and make improvements with your health, your weight, your fitness, and just your life. Now, if you're interested in using the CGM and also the Levels app, I have a link in my description down below where you can get two months free when you sign up for the app. But this has honestly been a really great experience for me, especially since I've never used the CGM before. And I really do think I'm gonna continue to use it just because I like the accountability, I like the consistency, and I do think that if I can stay the course, then this is gonna help me avoid any of those experiences that my dad had to go through. So thanks so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.